Well, Steve, despite the weather, it's a, it's a beautiful piece of road here in Ballina. What are some of the soft soil treatments that we're using up here? Well, the treatments we've used here include a low embankment strategy, wick drain and sur surcharge solution, lightweight fills, high strength geosynthetics, stone columns, dynamic replacement and deep soil mixing and lastly vacuum consolidation. A lot of your favourites I can tell. <laughs> what are some of the things that we're looking particularly behind us here? Because this is some of the low embankment stuff at the southern end of this stretch. That's right, the, at the interchange here at the bridge abutment we've got a wick drain and surcharge solution so wick drainage installed, surcharge, build up and settled over time, transitions down to a, a low embankment strategy here and some deep soil mixing on some culverts just to the south of that. Now a lot of those technologies obviously happen underground and we'll be looking at some animation to explain that properly a little bit later but what's your favourite bit about this section of the road? Well I think it's just the way we, by getting in early and starting the project a bit earlier than normal we've been able to, to build the, the settlement out of the approaches and get that bit bridge constructed. Well that's a really important point you raise here because people don't realise to get the best value for your buck you've got to get in early and start to settle the road so when you come along later some of that work's already been done. Yeah, time, time is uh, the most important element we've got in dealing with soft soils. Now as an architect I'm always interested in corridor widths but it has a different meaning for you guys. Yes well with the soft soils we do our environmental planning based on a concept design and we then purchase the land based on those requirements. As you can see here, we, we've had to put berms out to, to stabilise that embankment, which is added at about 20 or 30 metres to our width. So we need to know those things up front, or we get into real trouble with ownership and environmental legislation and planning issues. So, so corridor widths is the, is the width of land you have to buy in which you build the road? That's correct, yes. Right. Now, Steve, you mentioned time frames. They're important, aren't they? They are. These projects take a long time to get going. We've been working over 10 years on this, this project. We had to start with a detailed site investigation, lots of drilling to find out the distribution of materials across the floodplain. We then did a couple of trial embankments starting way back in 1998 to deliver a really complex project. So what all that research told you, Steve, there wasn't one size fits all, particularly for this 12.4 kilometre stretch of road. 